Are you a Marvel Legends collector that's feeling a little disenfranchised? Have the folks at Hasbro let you down recently with lower quality paint apps but higher prices? Are you feeling left in the dust by the brand new Ghost Rider engine of Vengeance HasLab? Prominent members of the Marvel Legends community with a platform on YouTube have taken the opportunity to hold Hasbro's feet to the proverbial fire. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hasbro's on the hot seat. Welcome back, True Believers! Elite Legend back at you guys with another Marvel Legends video. And today we're going to be breaking down the Feet to the Flames interview conducted by Boogie Nice over at NYCC Comic Con. Let's get straight to it. And first off, the Elite Legend wants to let you know that for this video, I spared no expense. I hired a behavior analyst to analyze the actions of the big three while they had their feet to the proverbial flames. Hello, mates. I need to keep my identity concealed for this video. But here you see Ryan Ping, the Grand Puba of the Hasbro team, displaying excellent posture. This is a fine display of passive-aggressive soy energy. The mood in the room is quite palpable. Ryan is ready to establish corporate appropriate dominance. Bug Nice comes in hot with the very first question. Was it always the plan to show off this HasLab at NYCC? Or is this a pivot based on how the project is going? Ryan answers that question. He states that the project isn't over. This was always the plan. Dan decides to interject with some of that thug energy that he has. And he's like, yo, son, I represent Queens. Listen, baby, she was raised down in Brooklyn. Question number two. Was there a pivot based on how the project is going? The Goblin Queen was added as a tier. Will there be another reveal? So now Dan is always trying, and maybe a little bit too hard. He attempts to keep his poise and keep it gangster. And he's like, all right, I'll answer. We take feedback. Yeah, and we pivoted. Ryan jumps in with a death stare. And then, baby, when you talking about that death stare, that's when you, with your lady, your main squeeze, the mama, your babies, the apple of yours. And you see that perfect hand, Jezebel. With that Coke bottle shape, country born and bred. And your honey boo boo, can't you look in at the corner of my eyes? That's hard time, daddy. That's a death stare, if you will. All right, Dusty. You gonna have to do like Kurt Russell and escape from New York, baby. And now we see Royan back with his maximum soy fueled righteous indignation. And Ryan is like, Hold the L, I'm gonna put my ashes out on these fools. Constant pivoting. I'm I'm pivoting when I'm awake. I'm pivoting when I'm asleep. Pivoting! That's when you cut the mic! Ryan is now in a trance as he is prepared to pontificate the tear process. Also known as fig splating, a wildly offensive corporate cuck move not easily understood by the common fans or collectors. However, it is a practice that is taken by gospel by the paid sponsors, also known as shields. I'm going to break it down how the tears work. Ryan then goes on to scold a paid sponsor by sending a message to others creating content that he does not consider to be accurate. After reestablishing dominance with a warning to put many panties in a bunch, including this here. He decided to finally answer Young Bug's question. At this point. At this point, no. Question three. The Goblin Queen is looking very conservative. Where is the underboob? 
Dan begins to hide once he hears the dreaded term, boob. Dwight, seemingly in a trance, likely remembering the last time he received a corporate-esque waterboarding once he recommended another use of the Moonstone Buck. Bug finishes by asking, is this titty cover-up a Disney thing? Dwight breaks his trance and goes into an impressive interpretive dance while reciting company lines without explaining anything. Well, maybe Dusty can help, since he was once an executive for Turner Broadcasting. Dusty? Hamila! 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 Luckily, I was able to find a YouTube corporate BS translator, and Dwight ended up saying that it's a multi-company thing, because reasons. But under the guise of this HasLab, you can get them. If you love this character and the Infernal Era, this is the closest you'll get. Now, here's my take, guys. Hasbro and Disney, they want a virtue signal. They make figures in communist China. They use plastic-free packaging to save the planet while producing those figures. And the leader of CO2 emissions and human rights violations. Hasbro uses pride officers to emasculate men with pronouns they desexualize women because Disney hates the female form. Yet, they love the idea of children attending drag shows and little boys hanging out in the girls' bathrooms. Put side boobs and under boobs on a premium action figure intended for men in a crowdfunding format that will never hit retail? Nope. Ryan begins to clap back for good measure. Look, we released a lot of characters over the years that wouldn't have been released. And these two tiers give us an opportunity to toss you some scraps. So don't bite the hand it feeds you, because I will politely slap you in the most appropriate corporate approved way possible. So don't come at me on Mephisto and Goblin Queen. Don't go with this project. It's either this way or no way. Let them baby, this is my house. So it's either going to be missionary or dusty. Family Channel! And don't come at me with these being in the plans for 23 and 24. Now Don, in an effort to defuse a potentially explosive situation, attempts to calm Ryan. Yo, son, like, get it off your chest, dog. I've been pivoting! That is translated into, does Wayne Brady got to smack a bitch? White comes in and starts to talk about all the praise that the HasLab has been getting by the audience over at the NYCC convention. People have been noticing. This is a premium product. Maybe this isn't for everyone. AKA broke bitches. Question four. I haven't seen the community divided like this before. We all believe it looks great, but we're hung up on the price. How do you justify this price? Dwight goes on to say that it's the same amount of tooling as other projects, but there's a lot of hidden because it's a car. Don interjects with some more street credible commentary. What y'all fools don't understand is today's price and yesterday's price, son. In this greatest Biden economy, yo, the Galactus would be five bills done. Ryan starts to pivot and says, this is a tough comp. The comps to this are a party wagon and a his tank, not some doll car or a remote control car from five years ago. Sensing that their marketing arm has strayed far away from the circle of trust and free shit distribution, Dwight asks Boog a question to help him redeem himself and return to their good graces to ensure future first look reveals. Since you're here, what's your opinion? Bug responds with, I've always been on board. I'm just not fully convinced about the price. I'll have to see the other tiers before I answer. Ryan has had enough. Look, I understand. Broke people don't like the price. If we could make it cheaper, we would. It's not our goal to waste time on projects that we think might not get funded because we charge too much. Question five by Boogie Nice. 
Is this $350 price tag for everything, tiers and all? Look, you guys don't understand shit. Question six. Why is a billion dollar company crowdfunding? Dwight's eyes seemingly are about to explode while Dan is trying to hide for cover. And Ryan basically says that Hasbro refuses to assume risks and prefers to pass the cost on to the sheep that are easily influenced by paid sponsors more than ever as Hasbro continues to leverage them during a time where they have record profits, sky-high prices, and an increase in overall quality. At this point, a rainbow-haired handler comes in and places her hand on Boog. I got three minutes. And hilarity ensues. Now, he went on to ask some lightning round questions about eye colors and heads and hands that the Elite Legend really wasn't interested in. My thoughts were that Boog did a good job asking questions that he should have been asking. And individuals in the community are acting as if this was a groundbreaking effort. Uh, Shardimus Prime considered this to be a gangster move. Have we devolved so far? Have we accepted the bare minimum for so long that just asking a simple question when you have a platform that influences... You're an influencer, right? If you are an influencer, you are there to influence the masses, not serve... Well, actually, if you are an influencer, you are serving as a marketing arm to Hasbro. So individuals are going to call you out for it. But that doesn't mean that you should leave objectivity out the window. Now, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you can be alerted to all of Elite Legends' next videos. I drop content regularly, so you don't want to miss that. Check out my Marvel Legends playlist. G.I. Joe Classified Series playlist. Check out my Thrift Hall playlist. I found a McFarlane Spider-Man in the wild, so you don't want to miss that. Scan that QR code to follow the Elite Legend on Instagram. I have a Facebook toy group called Elite Toy Collectors on Facebook. We are on the march to 500 members, so join the fam there. And until next time, make mine Marvel!